Now we look at the second part of the law of contract, which is capacity of the parties to enter the contract. What is capacity? It refers to a person's ability to make a valid contract. So a person could be a natural person, I don't mean like organic, you know, but human, human people are natural persons. Artificial persons, okay, artificial persons, I'm not talking about robots or cyborgs, I'm talking about companies. Companies are artificial persons and the state is an artificial person. So artificial persons under the Companies Act can sue and sue in their own name so they can enter contracts. Natural persons, human beings, can enter contracts except minors under the age of 18. Take note, huh? under the age of 18, have very limited capacity to enter contracts. They are only able to enter valid contracts in special cases. Drunk or insane persons also limited ability to enter contracts. So contracts paid by these persons could be void or they could be considered not valid. So let's say there has been a breach of contract. What are you going to do if somebody breaches your contract? You are going to ask for remedies. And these are not medical remedies like you want uh, Panadol or you want uh, Koyo. These are either common law or equitable remedies. So there's two categories, common law and equitable remedies. So let's look first and common law remedies. Common law remedies are the ones which appear automatically when you win. So we are now assuming that you have won your case. If you win your case, you're going to get monetary compensation. If you are the injured party, and when I say injured, I don't mean they've been punched in the face. It means that you are the one who suffered the loss because somebody breached the contract. So if you are the one who suffered a loss, then you will get damages. So it's not damage, it's not you get punched in the head or you broke a window, it's get money. Money which is compensation for the financial injury, not your physical injury, yeah, or the loss that you experience. So what kind of damage do you get? You can get liquidated damages. LD, anytime you've ever seen a uh, contract, like a construction contract, there's usually an LD or maybe a sale of a property, there's an LD because if you're late, they'll impose this amount that you need to pay. And so these LDs are very useful because you can pre-agree how much damages or compensation needs to be paid. So you don't need to dispute how much should be compensated. You just need to dispute whether compensation is payable or not. More, a lot of the time, if you actually did not agree on liquidated damages, then your damages are called unliquidated damages. This is actually more common. That means you actually have agreed on what your damages should be and you have to depend on the court to decide depending considering the circumstances and consequences of the breach. And this thing called equitable remedies. Equitable remedies are the remedies which you get if the court finds it is fair to give to you. Sometimes money is not enough. And if money is not enough, then what do you do? Sometimes you want not so much money, but you want an order to get the contracting party to do what he promised. And if, when you want him to do what he promised, is specific performance. You can get this if you are, if you had, for example, contracted to buy something which is so rare there's only one. And you really need to have it. And so if the court says it's fair, yeah, money is not going to compensate you because there's only one of this thing. So you get it. This is not as rare as it seems. Property is one of a kind. Even in an uh, apartment, one unit is different from another unit. So its location in space is different. So it is unique. So you can get specific performance when you're buying property. The opposite of it is injunction. Sometimes you don't want money so much as you want the person to stop. It's in order to stop doing something. And the court order to do to, of injunction is very strict. If you have, if you go against this order, you can get uh, arrested for breach of the court order. So, for example, X promises not to sell beer other than that brewed by Y. Then X ends up selling somebody else's beer. So Y gets an injunction to prevent X from selling the beer. 
So this comes to the end of our topic of law of contract. So please answer the simple questions you will find in the quiz and then you'll be marked as present. Thank you very much.